Uh, Representative Zephyr, let me please start with you. Uh, your speeches, including your speech today, you have taken what they accused you of doing, uh, breaching decorum, and you have put that up against death, literally. You have said that what these laws do is they can end up in people's deaths, whether it's suicides because people live in a society that others them and tells them that they are not welcome and they are scary and they are a threat, or because this entrenches hate against trans people. That's exactly right. And I gave the example of the suicide in my speech, but we've also had people attacked in public, run over by vehicles in Montana. The violence is escalating, and these policies create the conditions of that violence in our states. And the legislatures that are trying to pass them, when people stand up in defense of our communities, they're not, compl they're not okay with just passing it. They want to silence us. Representative Jones, uh, thank you and welcome to the show. I, I, well, something you said struck with me. You said, if you come for one of us, you come for all of us. You know, that I wasn't clear a few weeks ago when, when you were uh, kicked out of the Tennessee legislature that that was going to be the case. And what we saw was a whole bunch of people who didn't know anything about Tennessee or the Tennessee legislature or you uh, signing up and saying, not only do I want to help this cause, but I want to get into the cause. Definitely. Um, what we are seeing and what we warned about in Tennessee was that if it went forward in Tennessee, this, this attempt to silence dissent through the most extreme measures, it would set a precedent. And so we knew that if they came for one of us, they would come for, for others of us. And as we saw today um, with Representative Zephyr in Montana, this trend toward authoritarianism is just continuing. Um, and, but also, when I say that when they come for one of us, they come for all of us, that means that we're going to stand together in solidarity as a multiracial, multigenerational movement to say that we will not let, allow fascism to happen without a challenge, that we, that we care more about democracy than we do about decorum. We care more about the deaths of these young people than about this false decorum that's used to silence dissent and, and oppress voices that are challenging their dominant narrative of, of, of injustice. And so, um, you know, we, we must stand together. We stand with you, uh, Representative Zephyr, and whatever we can do to support, let, let you know that we're setting solidarity from Tennessee um, because we know that this is a very dangerous trend um, toward a, a road we don't want to go down. Representative Zephyr, how does that make you feel? Because you are a little different in this conversation. Your, your fight is not as far down the road uh, as the fight for, for civil rights for black Americans and, and even uh, gay Americans. Being trans in this country is very, very hard right now. How do you feel when, when, when Representative Jones says to you, when you come for one of us, you come for all of us, and we're with you? You know, I feel solidarity. What else could I feel? We know in this moment, uh, trans people are the target du jour uh, for the far right, with over 400 bills targeting the community across state legislatures this uh, this year. And I, but I know also in Montana, the first people standing up for me were the American Indian Caucus, pointing out that our state has a long history of targeting marginalized communities and with policies that lead to separation and death. And so we know that if we're going to succeed in this, one community is not enough to shift the tides of history here. We need all of us standing and fighting together. Congressman Frost, uh, I, I'm, I'm more than twice the age of all of you. Um, it is kind of interesting because uh, Representative Jones says that this is multi-generational and it's, 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 uh, it's multiracial. It does seem to be a lot of young, young people leading it. Is it multi-generational? Can you get the rest of us who are not as creative to, to get on this bandwagon and say it's going to look different in the future? It's going to change. Representative Ocasio-Cortez says it's darkest before the dawn. Do you believe that to be true? And can you get the rest of us to sign on to it? I do believe it to be true, and I believe it to be true because when we go to these actions, when we're out on the streets, we're protesting for our rights, our rights, the rights of our neighbors, the trans community, LGBTQ plus community, black folks, immigrants, poor people in this country. It's young people, but it's all generations coming together. And what we know, and we heard this time and time again at our press conference earlier today, is we stand on the shoulder of giants and the elders who've come before us. And, you know, I've, I've heard many times, and I'm sure Representative uh, Zephyr and Jones have heard this too the young people will save us and here's the thing it shouldn't have to be to the up to the young people mm -hmm. to save us we need everybody working together multiracial multi-generational coming together to fight for the world we deserve that's how we build an america that's true to its promise and an america that's true to its promise rejects fascism and embraces democracy a democracy where somebody like representative zephyr can stand up for their constituents for her constituents um, that deserve 
deserve to have that representation. But what we see happening is the right wing understands that time is not on their side, that this incoming generation of voters is voting for Democrats and people who are going to fight for them. And so they're clenching to that power with everything that they can do. And that's why we're seeing this rise in right wing fascism across the country. But we're going to fight it and we're going to win. Let's talk about something you mentioned when you were outside the Capitol today, uh, Congressman Frost. You, you were talking about they don't have solutions to climate, as you just mentioned. They don't have solutions. To, but the, the thing that got Representative Jones kicked out and the thing that you were talking about that nobody seems to have a solution for, despite the fact that most Americans would like this sorted out, is guns. Gun violence is not complicated to most Americans across the political spectrum. There are solutions to this. Representative Jones and, and his colleagues down there were trying to draw attention to that in the way that a democracy says you're allowed to draw attention to things. Nobody was setting anything on fire. Nobody was throwing anything through any windows. Nobody was trying to overtake the Tennessee legislature. But in the end, how do you lead on this thing? How do you get yourself, uh, uh, how do you get politics in this nation in line with what people actually want to happen? And that's the thing, you know, bipartisanship to the rest of us means what we can agree on. When it comes down to universal background checks and common sense gun reform, most Americans, most Republicans, most NRA members are for common sense reform. But the definition of bipartisanship in the United States Congress and in Washington, D.C., takes a little bit of a different definition, and it becomes what the NRA is okay with. But what we know to be true, again, is with this new generation of voters, we are calling out the BS, and we are voting out the people who are continuing these systems of oppression that are not allowing us to pass the laws we need so we can live in a country where we have true freedom, the freedom to live in our communities, in our schools, in our homes, without that fear of violence. And when it comes down to these Republicans and these state legislatures really scapegoating decorum, let's be clear, it's not about decorum. If it was about decorum, we'd hear them talking more about what happened on January 6th. What it is, is these representatives have challenged a system of white supremacy, of misogyny, of transphobia, and they are challenging that. And they, they don't want it to be challenged. And that's why uh, we see these horrible actions going on right now. It has nothing to do with decorum and everything with keeping in the systems that have kept the three of us and people who look like us and who are us for generations out of positions of power. But that's changing in this country. So let's talk about that, uh, Representative Jones. Uh, people like you and, and Representative Zephyr got into politics to change structures, right? And that's not always the case. Some people get into politics because they like the structure. They think it'll be fun to take a paycheck or or or, or be a politician and give speeches. You, you guys got into this to change the structure. And yet, in both Tennessee and Montana, you have Republican supermajorities. And in Tennessee, some of those Republicans didn't run against anyone in the last election. They were acclaimed in their seat, which is a fascinating piece of information in 2023 that someone uh, gets acclaimed. I, I don't know why it happens. It, it needs to not happen. But as a result of you being ejected, a whole bunch of people across this country said, I'm going to run for office or I'm going to get involved in campaigns. I mean, that is what gives me hope is that. If you look at if you look at what they did, it is, is, is that their attacks on democracy are galvanizing a movement. They have lost a generation. And, and the truth be told is that, you know, in the South, we have a saying a dying meal kicks the hardest. These systems of white supremacy, these systems of transphobia, of homophobia, of, of, of plantation politics are dying. And, and so that's why we're seeing this extreme reaction, because they know that we look at the screen right now. This represents the future of America. This represents the vision of America that they're so fearful of because it is an inclusive America. It's one that affirms human dignity. It's one that affirms our solidarity with each other, our connection. But, but let them be on notice that this is just the beginning, that we are going to continue to push forward toward that vision of America that lives up to what it says on paper, towards that vision of America that, that challenges this notion that people like us don't belong in elected office, because we're not going in there, um, you know, to, to make friends. We're going in there to make change. And that's the difference, is that we are not going to assimilate. We're not going to conform to a system that's been meant to make us feel small, meant to stifle our voices and the voices of our constituents. But we're going with this bold mandate to say that we have to push forward together and that and that these systems, that, that their time has come and that a new generation is rising up to, 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 to make America um, what it ought to be. Zoe Zephyr, tell us what we don't know uh, in, in your life. You, you decided to run because of these uh, laws that were being passed in Montana. You, like uh, Representative Jones, decided to get involved as a result of this. This has got to be very, very hard for you. It's not fun being trans in America. It's not fun being trans in public, and it's not fun being trans in a, in a Republican supermajority uh, legislature where they just silenced you today. Tell me what motivates you right now. 
So I want to draw a quick distinction there in that we are seeing the, a huge increase in attacks legislatively on the trans community, but the policies that they're bringing forward are out of step with uh, average Americans. When I walk through my community, I am known, I am loved, and I am supported. And people see, my community sees the joy that trans people have when we step in and get to be ourselves. As for what I'm feeling right now, when you stand up on behalf of democracy, when you make the correct moral and ethical choice, it's hard to feel anything other than pride in that moment and pride for the people who came to the Capitol to show support for democracy and demand that it works. What a remarkable uh, conversation. Uh, thank you to all three of you for being here. Thanks for doing what you do for democracy. Representative Zoe Zephyr, Tennessee Representative Justin Jones, Florida Congressman Maxwell Frost. We appreciate you all being with us tonight. In the battle for the soul of America, pay attention to the state legislatures. These are the front lines, end quote. That's how one Democrat put it today, when just two weeks after Republicans in Tennessee voted to expel two black representatives, another Republican-led state legislature voted to kick out a Democrat who dissented. This is Montana State Representative Zoe Zephyr. She's a Democrat. The people of Montana House District 100, part of the city of Missoula, elected to represent them. Today, Republicans voted to bar her from the state house chamber for the rest of the current legislative session. The Republican playbook here is very similar to what we all watched in Tennessee. Her transgression, according to the Montana House Republicans, was breaking with decorum in the chamber. That's the thing these days. Zoe Zephyr is trans. She is Montana's first and only trans lawmaker. And last week, she said this to her Republican colleagues as they pushed a bill to restrict gender-affirming care for minors. And then the only thing I will say is if, I, if you vote yes on this bill and yes on these amendments, I hope the next time there's an invocation, when you bow your heads in prayer, you see the blood on your hands. Republicans also accuse Representative Zephyr of inciting demonstrators who'd assembled in the House gal uh, gallery to support her, again, very similar to what we saw in the Tennessee State House. And just a few hours ago, the Montana State House voted 68 to 32 along party lines to bar Representative Zephyr from entering the chamber for the rest of the legislative session. She can vote and attend sessions remotely. Speaking before the vote this afternoon, Representative Zephyr, who will join us in just a moment, defended her initial comments. She defended the right of her constituents to have their representative in the State House chamber, and she defended democracy itself. Last week, I spoke on the governor's amendments to Senate Bill 99, which banned gender affirming care. This was a bill that was one of many targeting the LGBTQ community in Montana. I have had friends who have taken their lives because of these bills. I have fielded calls from families in Montana, including one family whose trans teenager attempted to take her life while watching a hearing on one of the anti-trans bills. So when I rose up and said, there is blood on your hands, I was not being hyperbolic. I was speaking to the real consequences of the votes that we as legislators take in this body. And when the speaker asks me to apologize what he is, uh, on behalf of decorum, what he is really asking me to do is be silent when my community is facing bills that get us killed. He's asking me to be complicit in this legislature's eradication of our community, and I refuse to do so, and I will always refuse to do so. I would also say that if you use decorum to silence people who hold you accountable, then in the name of the, all you are doing is using decorum as a tool of oppression. Additionally, when the speaker disallowed me to speak, what he was doing is taking away the voices of the 11,000 Montanans who, who elected me to speak on their behalf. What my constituents in my community did is came here and said, that is our voice in this body. Let her speak. Let her speak. And when the speaker gaveled down the people demanding that democracy work, demanding that their representative be heard, when he gaveled down, what he was doing is driving a nail in the coffin of democracy. But you cannot kill democracy that easily. 
you cannot kill democracy that easily. We know Republicans are using these attacks to ignite their base. It's kind of a cynical political nihilism that isn't interested in making your life any better through policy. It's about othering people, making them scary. And as you heard State Representative Zephyr say, it's causing real harm. Today, outside the Capitol, another prominent young Democrat condemned Republicans. For these folks, January 6th was just a dress rehearsal. It was just a dress rehearsal because legally, let's not lose the plot. They were trying to block a duly elected official, in this case, the president of the United States, from taking office. And legislatures across the country looked at that and say, you know what, let's try to get Representative Jones out from office. Let's try to get Representative Zoe Zephyr in Montana out of office. Let's try to kick out the people because we cannot beat them. This is what fascism does when it is on its hind heels. It, it is always darkest before dawn. We are winning this thing. We are winning this thing. Pay attention to state legislatures. These are the front lines. Also joining Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez at that rally, which coincidentally was called on the front lines of democracy, young and fed up. Two other young Democrats who will also be joining us in just a moment. The Tennessee State Representative Justin Jones and the youngest member of the U.S. House, Florida Democrat Maxwell Frost. As we saw in Tennessee, their action was to set a precedent. We saw what happened in Montana a couple hours ago. And if we do not stand together, it will continue to happen again and again and again and grow more extreme. And so our message is quite simple, is that if you come for one of us, you come for all of us. If you come for one of us, you come for all of us. We've seen the rise of this right-wing movement that is dangerous, that is dangerous, and target, targeting marginalized communities because they don't have solutions to the affordable housing crisis, to the housing crisis. They don't have solutions to ending gun violence. They don't have solutions to the existential climate crisis. So what they want to do instead is pick marginalized communities, LGBTQ plus folks, trans folks, black people, black history, books, immigrants, and target them instead. We are here to challenge power. We are here to reclaim power. And we are here to build power, not just for communities, but with them, with them.